it's rolling away. Come back. I probably need to take them nuts off there before I tackle this. When doing this sort of stuff, always wear proper shoes or steel toe cap boots. This, <laughs> this is not right. Check out my safety video in the link below. That there is a threaded bush, what threads into the frame. Don't know if you can see that. But that takes up the play between the bolts for the engine. So the other one hasn't got anything. So when I put the engine up, it'll be right butted against that one on the frame. I'll, I'll twist that in for now so I can get the motor up easier. And then we'll twist that out so it meets the, meets the engine. So the front of the engine is just hanging on two screwdrivers and the bottom supported by the jack a bit and this bolt is nearly lined up. I just need to shift the engine back a little bit, could probably do that by hand and then that bolt goes through and out the other side. But I don't want to poke that all the way through yet because I need to adjust that bush. So you see that bush there, it's on slots. So I can now wind that in. Hard to do this while filming, hang on. I'm just holding my phone, I don't have it on a tripod or anything. So I just keep winding that bush in until it touches the motor. That way there's no play between the frame and the motor. So you're not actually straining anything when you do the bolt up. Right. Now I can push the bolt the rest of the way through. Let's see if I hold my phone there and do it. There he is. So now, if I just jack this up a bit, I reckon that bolt hole there will line up for that bolt. It's actually taking the weight of the bike. There you go, come on, move the other. There you go, that's in there. Let's get the other one in. Take the jack away. And there you go, it's in. So, this is where I have to remember to get the wire for the stator, I think you call it, stator wires. Right down through this bit before I get the motor in. Oh, where the motor is in, but before I put this bolt in, because I think the wire goes under where that bolt goes through, and the plug's not big enough. This one's got a little bit of oil around it, but this engine's not going to be on in very long, and I'll be putting the other motor in, so I'm going to do the wiring repair to stop the oil leaking on the other motor. Because this one's going to get a full rebuild at some point. I actually left these spaces on in the right order, so I remember where they went. So that's a big spacer for this end, that's a little spacer for the other end, so that bolt goes in there, the spacer goes in here. Look at that, that's lined up well. And I'll go around the other side, put the other spacer in. 
I don't know if you can see that in there, the battery box might be in the way, but that little spacer just fits in between the motor. And there's another one of them um, adjustable bushings there, look, in this one. So I'm going to unwind that, make that easier for me to get that bush in there. Train it on the other side, push the bolt through. There he goes. Push him back a bit so I can now, now the bush is in there, I can wind this bushing out. And just check the other side, make sure there's no play in between the bush and the frame, which there isn't, because I've tightened this bush up and pushed it over. So now the bolt comes through and we can get the nut on and we can torque all these bolts up now. Right, once all these bolts are torqued up to an initial torque, you need to undo these two which have got these bushings in and actually torque that bushing up to five Newton meters with a special tool, which I don't have. Basically, it'll be, a, it'll be a round tool that fits over these threads of this bolt with two little pegs on it and you can actually fit on that bush and tighten it up to five newton meters and then once that's tightened up to five, I won't do that now because I need to make a tool and I don't have time right now. And then once that's done, you can put the nuts back on and tighten it up to the finishing torque. I won't tell you what the torques are either because I think it varies from the different models and I don't want to get involved in people saying oh you told me how to do it like this and it's not right so if you're doing this sort of job you're going to get yourself a manual and you're going to work that stuff out for yourself. Right so before I get too carried away bolting bits and pieces back on I'm just going to lay the chain on here to make sure I'll try and lay the chain on here make sure that all it looks straight when it's on the um, sprocket so make sure that the engines lined up right and make sure the spacing for the chain and everything's okay it should be in the right place because there's no real other place you can put it but that looks okay I'm not worried about that so I'm gonna pull this back off again and we'll put that back on later Right, normally when I take the exhausts off, these oxygen sensors dangle in the right place and I get them back in the right place. But because I've had the motor out and all this has moved around here, I don't know what one's what. So it's very important that they go back on the right cylinder because otherwise it's going to be adjusting the fuel in for the wrong cylinder because it's reading the exhaust off of one and then adjusting it on another cylinder if they're the wrong way around. So what I'm going to do to find out which one's which is I'm going to unplug one of them here and that will hopefully give me a fault and tell me which cylinder the fault's on. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark one of these. I'll mark that one there. And then the other end of it, which is that there, I'll unplug. Like that. So, error codes, lambda sensor 2, heater, injectors, yep, throttle position sensor, yeah, we know them, I've still got them all disconnected. So, that tells me there that that is the lambda sensor number 2, the one with a white mark on it now. So, I know where that goes. The other thing is, which one cylinder 1 and which one cylinder 2? Well, what I've done now is, I've, I've only connected one injector, because the injector wires will only reach to the proper place so what I'm going to do now is read the error codes again and both injectors are disconnected so what I'll do is I'll erase error codes it's erasing error codes erased now I'll read them again right and now it says the only fault is injector 2 well the only injector fault is injector 2 there so I know that the one I've got unplugged is injector 2 so that I know that this cylinder now is number 2. So it goes from left to right as you're sitting on the bike, number 1, 
and number two. Right, so I've got the exhaust back on it. I've put coolant in it. It's got oil in it. The fuel tank's not on, so fuel pump's not there either. And I've disconnected a wire off the coil because I'm gonna spin it over now with no, with no spark plugs in it to get the oil pressure up. Sometimes, some coils, if you leave them connected and there's no spark plugs connected, they can arc back through the coil and, and damage it. So that's why I've taken a wire off the coil. So now, we're just gonna spin it over and get a bit of oil pressure before I fire it up. Well, don't start for some reason. Okay, voice that then. It's okay with a stand up. It's because it must it must be in gear, so it wouldn't start with a stand down. So I'll put the gear shift back on and knock it out of gear. It's actually in neutral, but. The actual neutral light's not coming on, it doesn't realise it's that it thinks it's in first gear for some reason, so I'm just gonna go with it and I'll sort this little thing out later. We just want to get some oil pressure up for now and then start it up. There you go, the light's gone out already. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase the faults before I start it up. So I connect to the bike, error codes, lambda sensor heater injector and ignition coil. Right, erase them. Okay, there was no fault in there for gear position sensor or anything like that. So this has still got the bobber tune on it. I haven't put the um, speed twin tune on it yet because I know that my bobber starts and everything like that. So I want to leave it like that and just start this up on the bobber tune. So, so it starts up all right now. I've replaced the sensor on the gearbox for the gear position because the one on here wasn't actually working at all. I got one off of my other engine and put that on. So now it's registering all the gears. Um, I've got to put the chain back on and the rear guard and stuff. I had the guard off to clean it. And the next video you'll see, we'll be riding it and I'll let you know what it's like. But before that, we're going to flash the ECU with the street twin tune because this has got a bobber tune on it at the moment and the timing's a bit too far advanced for the higher compression. So we need to sort that out. But that's going to be a whole new separate video. Have a great day.